You are listening to Absolute Knowledge and Truth International Ministry, brought to you by the Men Empowered Organization on the Block Talk Radio Network at blocktalkradio.com. My name is Maurice Heron, and I am your host. It is a September the 6th, 2011, and you know what time it is. It's time for Absolute Knowledge and Truth. And tonight we are hosting the Gathering of Christ. Most of you all know them from YouTube, MySpace, and uh, they've been uh, teaching us some great, been giving us some great information according to the Word of God. And uh, I tell you what, it's been all good. We are waiting for Elder Rikashia, if I'm pronouncing that name right again. But while we are waiting, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, Brother Baruch. Are you there? How you doing? Yes, sir. How you doing, brother? We are doing good. I'm just waiting on Elder, and I just wanted to see if everybody was uh, on on the air and everything. We're getting ready while we're waiting on him. I just wanted you to just kind of greet the people while you're on the uh, phone. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, all praises to the Father. I greet you in peace. Shalom, shalom. Uh, to everyone out in the listening audience, uh, feel great today. I feel blessed to be here uh, today. And uh, this is the direction we are taking. This is the, the area where we want to focus on and getting our people back in tune with themselves back in tune with God, back in tune with their wisdom, knowledge, and above all, understanding, and, of course, their spiritual growth and the blessings and the curses that have been laid before them in this day and time. Uh, is the prophet in yet? I uh, haven't seen the prophet, but the uh, uh, elder had just gave me a call while you were speaking, and he should be on momentarily. I am looking for his uh, – he was here while you were speaking, but uh, I wanted to go ahead and let you finish up, and uh, he should be with us probably in about uh, one minute. And uh, we're going to hear back from you, Brother Baruch. Well, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn you all over to Elder. Elder, we're – uh, glad that you are with us here today, tonight. Uh, I know it's late where you are, but it is a pleasure to have you here tonight. And I just wanted to let you go ahead, that your mic is on, and uh, you can have your liberty, sir. Okay. Uh, I want to say shalom. How are you doing, Brother Mark? You doing well? Shalom. We're doing great. Good to hear from you. Okay. Praise the most high. Yes, um, uh, I wanted to thank you for inviting us on your show. Uh, it was it was an honor the last time we were there, and you opened uh, the day for us. So I thought that we would go into a few things. I said that I would, uh, through the Spirit of the Most High, speak about uh, the alien, or what you would call the alien technology within the Earth today, or what. Or, or what we see all over the earth with the so-called UFO uh, phenomenon and how the government through sci-fi and television and through movies have prepared us to accept some spiritual phenomenon uh, uh, or alien invasion. And uh, I wanted to speak about these things uh uh, with a with a biblical or Bible context this evening, uh, I want to talk about the things that are out there concerning the UFO activity, 
what the world is saying and what the Most High is saying concerning these things. All right. First and foremost, alien come, the word alien itself comes from a Hebrew word, Allah or Alian, which means God or powers. So what brothers and sisters don't understand, alien itself is speaking of fallen gods. These are demons and spirits. And some of us don't know how to decipher the activity we see today from the activity of uh, angels coming into our atmosphere during biblical times, and I hope we can clear this up. Okay? The alien invasion that society uh, will not allow us to understand is the fall of Lucifer. That was the beginning of so-called alien invasion inside this earth. When the fallen angels, when one-third of the angels fell, uh, fell and rebelled against the Most High and was banished into the earth, these same angels uh, under Lucifer um, tricked Adam and Eve into uh, sinning against the Most High and gained power over the earth. Job 9 and 24 says, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked, and he covered the faces of the judges thereof. When he fell, he gained power to Adam's sin over the earth, and he covered the faces of the judges. So he started setting up his own democracy or his own government within the earth to judge the earth unrighteously. unrighteously. And these judges and leaders who've been set up by the wicked have hid the truth concerning the alien invasion. When I say alien invasion, these fallen angels taught men things in which they were not supposed to uh, understand or deal with. And these angels also gave man technology, the majority of technology we see today, in exchange for these fallen angels who would need help to get back to the heavenly realm. I want to read a few scriptures to speak on this that talks about this. And uh, once we read the scriptures, brothers and sisters out there will know what to look for and what to, to shy away from. <clears throat> okay? I want to make this 100% clear. The majority of activity that we see in this earth today with, with, uh, with this flying technology, so-called UFOs, the majority of these so-called UFOs is angel technology through NASA that's light years or I would say years away from our, fly, our, our modern day flying technology. And uh, they are preparing their battleships to fight against Christ who's coming into the atmosphere. So through this, Satan understands that at the very end, they would have their ships operating within the earth. So they, they use their media and their spin machines to have us looking into things that divert us from the second coming of Christ and to excuse this alien phenomenon uh, within, within the earth or us seeing things in the sky that's abnormal. Every other year you hear things like, uh, and I'm going to go back to what I'm saying, uh, the scriptures in a moment, but every other year you hear uh, things like uh, the Mayan, uh, the Mayan prophecies. Um, uh, we hear things about uh, planet Nubiru, and and uh, we hear other. Uh, now the latest lie and deception is a uh, comet element, or you may hear about comets coming into the earth. Well, I'm going to make this clear, brothers and sisters. In the Testament of Solomon, it speaks how spirits 
would go over the firmament of the heavens or firmament of the earth and fall back into the earth. These are demons and spirits. All right. So to pass this off so that people can believe it's just science or just by chance that these things happen every 10, 15, 10 million light years or whatever lie the scientists put out there. So that you're not confused or baffled or, or, or scared when these things happen. They pass it all through the news and say they're common. When it's really what I would call demonic activity within the earth. And I'm going to speak of, speak of this. Understand, brothers and sisters, that there's nothing new under the sun. The technology, uh, you all, we all see today like airplanes, helicopters, normal things that fly. Back in biblical times, those things would have been considered UFOs or unidentified flying objects because that technology was not being used as we see today. But... There's proof that uh, the blueprint for planes, the blueprint for helicopters, they found in the hydroglyphics. They found these things within the pyramids thousands of years uh, before our modern-day technology, which means the fallen angels or the Nephilim powers gave this technology to mankind well before the European uh, uh, Empire or the Roman Empire. This technology we see today of flying objects come from ancient times. Why? Because the angels that fell are from ancient times and they taught this technology to civilization. And the Most High told us to stay away from them. Stay away from the technology and don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven. All right? So let me get a few scriptures here to see if we can clear this up so brothers and sisters out there can understand what to look for and what to stray away from altogether and what to ignore so that we can keep our focus on Christ and not the deceptions and wiles of the devil that would deceive us into believing in science and these and these news programs opposed to the Most High God and His Son, Yeshua. When I say the Most High God, Ahia is His name. When we go into Isaiah, and you all can follow me, the, the only Bible I use is the uh, King James Version Bible. All right, so if you follow us with the NIV, uh, all these other newer Bibles that, that, that the enemy have put in place to keep us away from the true understanding, any King James, New, New King James Revised, all those books, put them away, go back to an original King James Version Bible. All right, now, when I go to Isaiah the 14th chapter, Listen to this clearly. It says 14 and 12. How art thy fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? So something fell from heaven. Sounds like a comment to me. Now mm -hmm. something falls from heaven and breaks through our atmosphere and breaks through the firmament, which is fire. It'll, it'll barrel down to the earth and you would, it will look like a ball of fire. But something fell from heaven and broke that atmosphere. And these are angels, brothers and sisters. All right? And it says, uh, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? So Lucifer was once one of the morning stars that sing before the Most High. So Isaiah asked that question, How did you fall from heaven? Now, he didn't say, How did you fall from heaven, O element? or any other comment that, that the news may pass off as, you know, just science or a rock that fell to our atmosphere. Okay? There's no asteroids in our atmosphere and rocks in our atmosphere coming down to hit the Earth. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. How many times have you seen 
cameras on the outside of the Earth with uh, astronauts and NASA working on the outside of the Earth. Have you ever seen one rock out there in the atmosphere or outside of the firmament of heaven with those cameras? Where was the rocks at? There's no asteroids and rocks floating around in heaven. Okay? Those are things that they, they're lying so that you'll believe that when these spirits and angels come into the earth, uh, that they're rocks from other galaxies and planets that have exploded. Science is a joke, okay? What they're doing, they're, they're hiding their, their leaders, their gods, their masters through science. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, speak about that in a moment also. But back to Isaiah. How art thy fallen from heaven, O son of the morning, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thy cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the heavens. I will be like the most high. So Lucifer promised once he was hurled to go back into the heavenly realm. Therefore, he linked in with mankind and those who had uh, an insatiable appetite for power and agreed that he would give these people in the earth power over God's people. If they in turn help him get into the heavenly realm to go back to his original position. This is what NASA is about. This is what the space program is all about. And we know that we're near the end of this, end of this because America is no longer, well, publicly, dealing with the space program within the United States. They have fulfilled their portion of helping the angelic forces that fell from heaven, get back into the heavenly realm. They have built satellites. They have built serious technology to prepare for this impending battle, moving Lucifer and his angels back into the heavenly realm to clash with the second coming of Christ. This is what's going on. We, we are entering into the war in heaven. Armageddon. When you go to, to the book of Revelations, I'm going there, follow it. It talks about it. Revelations 12 says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. The 12 stars represent the 12 tribes of Israel. And she being with the child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. And we know that great red jack dragon represents the powers that are being controlled by Lucifer. Okay? That great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. This is the vision John is seeing on the Isle of Patmos. He was, he was exiled to an island uh, for teaching the word of the Most High by the Romans. And there the Most High showed him a vision, and, he, and he's looking at this red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. So these seven heads represent the seven mountains of Rome. The ten horns represent the ten countries that were originally in league uh, with the EU, which are modern-day heads over NATO. And it says, and it tells you the third part of the stars of heaven. Let me know that the spirit of the serpent that are behind governments, these governments that John is seeing here, is the same spirit that drew a third of the angels and the heavenly realm of the angels into this earth at the beginning. Now, this is what I would call an alien invasion. 
Mm. It tells you the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Now, if we're living in this modern time with news and all these talking heads who are in league with the beast, they would say, okay, uh, don't worry about it. These things happen ever so often. Uh, the comet Lucifer will be coming at this date. And see, what they're doing is they're passing all fallen angels and demons who are falling into the earth through news. And this way, the, the normal populace who are in this bubble and program won't get alarmed. It, 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 it will not shake the people. And then you have all these theories popping up about selling in and what that means when it comes to the signs of time. I'm going to go into that, but let me stay focused here. It says, and it tells you the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. So this dragon will stop, will try to stop the deliverance of something. So there's an agenda with these space invaders. For to, for to devour her child, as soon as it was born. So Lucifer was set up, and he controlled governments all the way up until the Roman Empire. He's controlling the Roman Empire today. Same people he's controlling. To be in position to kill the child before it could fulfill his function in the earth that would give power back to God's people. See, Satan tricked Adam and Eve and gained all power of the earth. He knew there would come a time that a sacrifice would be born in, in, the, in the earth that could undo that transgression and give power back to the children of Abraham. So this same fallen one had his antennas up waiting, waiting for this child to come into the earth looking to kill this child because this child would have the power to stomp the head of the serpent. So we're talking about Satan and his cohorts sitting with diplomats in the high powers of the earth during crisis time and letting them know, well, listen, we have to kill this child. So I would call this ancient eugenics. When you look at the fifth verse, it says, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And her child was caught up in, unto God and to his throne. Talking about Christ. He, he, he died. He defeated death. He got power of hell in heaven. Therefore, Lucifer, the fallen one, his time would kick down. He would have a minimal window from this point. From the time that Christ was crucified up until the time that Christ would return, he would have a window to use the earth and use the government of the earth to get into the heavenly realm. He had to speed up his, 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 his work with these kings and, and, and with the government of this earth. He had to to, to really speed this up, knowing that he had a short time. Even if it meant the destruction of the earth itself, he would rape the earth and, and, and pillage the earth. He would use as much technology as possible to get into the heavenly realm. It says here, I'm in Revelation 12, and it says, the sixth verse. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Now in 70 AD, God's people were taken down by the Roman Empire. And they fled into Africa. Which mm -hmm. is here where she had a place prepared of God. So the Most High had Africa there to be a refuge for the children of Israel until they found the children of Israel in the golden city of Timbuktu, in the jungle, 
who found them, the Ishmaelites, which are Arabs, who are part of this conspiracy against God's people, and the Edomites, who are the Romans. And they should feed her there 1,203 score days. Now, when you jump down a few verses here, let me go straight to it. The ninth verse. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Why does the Bible in Revelation call this the old serpent? It's the same serpent that deceived Adam and Eve in the garden. It's that old serpent from the beginning. That's what John is seeing here. It says, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. So Satan would be the ultimate deceiver over the earth. His technology, his government, his news program, everything within the earth would be made to deceive the masses. That means we can't believe anything coming from this society. We can't believe anything they tell us concerning the heavenly realm. We can't believe anything they tell us, believe, believe it or not, concerning the earthy realm. We must step outside the bubble and see the wiles of the devil, his trickery, his science, and we must fight against him and his powers. Now, I'm going to, to identify those powers in one moment who deceived okay. the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels, Allahayan, Allahayan, or his Allahayan, which are aliens, were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. See, once the disciples were converted into understanding Christ, and this newfound understanding was in the earth to fight against the government of Satan. Satan now had no pretext but to kill those who had the knowledge to fight against his kingdom. And see, now we understand why Christ was crucified, why the disciples were martyred, and why they stormed and destroyed Jerusalem, why they're killing us in the wilderness right now in Africa, why they have always killed us. They are afraid of the knowledge that the Most High would put in us that would empower us over our deceivers. Okay, They don't want that voice in the wilderness crying out with truth that can liberate the earth. The whole earth is in a, in a stage of deception, and that deception leads to death. I'm going to go into that in one moment also, but let me keep focused. Revelations 12 and 11 says, And they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb that was Christ on Calvary. And it says, and by the word of their testimony, they love not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens. That's the heavenly realm. The angels rejoiced when Christ was crucified, when Christ shed his blood over the heavenly tabernacle. Why? Because Lucifer could no longer come before the throne and accuse the brethren like he did in the Old Testament, like he did against Abraham, like he did against Job. The angels were finished with this guy. So they rejoiced when this happened. But something, but, but the result of this meant much mayhem and hurt to the earth. Therefore rejoice ye heaven and ye that dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he has but a short time. So he promised to go to the heavenly realm. And he will do anything he can to get off of this earth and use anyone he can. It's all our government officials, the Masonic orders, the government powers, NASA, 
the military. He would use everything he can, these deceived people, to fight against the Most High. And when a dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he started persecuting the woman, which brought forth the man-child. So because he could not fight Christ, and because he was so upset that he could no longer go before the heavenly realm to accuse his brethren, he started killing us. His campaign, this is Satan's program in the earth. Okay, well, Christ has to come back for his people, correct? Okay. I'll tell you what. Let's kill off of all God's people. Then there'll be nobody for him to come back for. There'll oh. be no one left. So let's just kill off all of God's people, the woman that bear Christ, since we can't kill Christ. Let's just kill everyone off. And therefore, we could, we could abort the judgment that's coming. Satan or the fallen one has even deceived himself. And that's why John saying, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. This mad spirit that was against the Most High from the beginning is now at war with us. I'm reading in Revelation. It says, Revelation 12 and 14, and to the woman were given two wings of an eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, time, and a half of time from the face of the serpent. Now, that's a dispensation of time or a time period between the time that they would utterly try to destroy Israel altogether, and when you look at it in years, it was a time between 70 A.D. and the time around the uh, 13th century that the Ishmaelites, along with the Edomites or the Romans, found the Golden City Timbuktu to begin their eugenics program that would lead to them identifying who Israel is throughout the four corners of the earth in their attempt to uh, destroy the woman, the children of Israel. So, so in part, the Most High did us a favor by scattering us throughout the four corners of the earth, even though it was a curse, because by scattering us, we were not in one area in which they could kill us off altogether. So that means the serpent must come with a program that can identify the children of Israel throughout the four corners of the earth to accomplish his eugenics program. See, I'm reading you eugenics right here. Eugenics don't start with Europeans in the, in the 18th century. Eugenics is the plan of Lucifer to eradicate the children of Israel off the face of the earth. Revelation mm. 12 and 16. Now, I'm going to say this. Uh, some of this information we were compiling while we were in the United States while I was there, all right? Point, at one point pulling out this information and, and, and relating it to the Jewish powers and what their programs are today, you know, at one point I received threats bringing out this information. Mm. Okay, and this was out of the Bible. Mm. All right? And this was just biblical information, but we were tying in biblical information with modern politics. But that's a whole other story. I'll go into mm -hmm. that some other time. It says here in Revelations 12 and 16, And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed up the flood with the dragon cast out of her mouth, which means... Because the Roman Empire and Lucifer could not destroy us all at once, they came with the flood of science, of, 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 of the, with their educational institutions and their religious institutions that could go out throughout the earth and find the children of Israel and destroy them by any means necessary. So that's that flood that came out. Okay. Predominantly through the Roman Catholic Church, the lies that would come out through the whore. 
the mother of all harlots. And it tell you the earth would help the woman. That means the knowledge that the Most High would give us to identify the fallen one that came out of the earth. What came out of the earth? The Essene Scrolls from the Qumran Caves. The Book of Enoch, the information of the Book of Jasher, gave us information that completed the information within the Bible to identify the fallen ones. So this is high level. The same reason, the, Ro the only reason the Roman Catholic Church canonized the books is they wanted to control religion and stop people from understanding who was actually over the whole, uh, the whole uh, uh, conspiracy or lie. They, they never wanted us to figure out that all the empires of this earth are actually worshiping fallen angels or God, and that leads us to where we are today. Let's, let me go back a few, a few, a few chapters on uh, the book of Jeremiah. So let's say if we would talk about the, mo the modern-day activity. When you read the book of Jeremiah in the 10th chapter, you notice in the Old Testament the Most High uh, continually say, Hear Israel. Hear, O Israel. He's speaking to us. He wants us to hear this thing because, listen, the world is not listening. The world never listens to the Most High. The Gentile nations and powers who are in control could care less about, you know, they don't know the Most High because it's not part of their culture or understanding uh, uh, when it comes to the worshiping of the God of the Hebrews. All nations are used to following their own gods. So when you read Jeremiah 10 and 1, it says, Hear ye the word which the Lord hath speaking unto you, O house of Israel. Listen to this clearly, brothers and sisters. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. That means the Gentiles. Don't learn their way. Okay, the things that work for the nations do not work for the children of Israel. They can prosper in what they do because their gods reward them. But the children of Israel have what you would call different circumstances, and a di different book to go by. We can't prosper unless we yield our spirits to their gods. So the Most High says, listen, thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. So it's telling the children of Israel, listen, don't be dismayed at the signs of what you may see coming out, what they're talking about, in the heavenly realm. So what was the Mosai doing here by telling Jeremiah to explain this to the people? Don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven. He's telling you that Lucifer would be doing false signs in the heaven. Common sense. So don't you get caught up into that. My people... Let the heathen get caught up into, into planet Nubaru and, 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 the, and the Mayans' 2012 prophecy. And I tell people all the time, listen, if the Mayans understood prophecy to that degree and was on point, how is it that the Europeans came over to the New World and, and, and took them down? Okay. So their prophecy must not have been that on point if they couldn't thwart the destruction that came from the Europeans. Okay? These Mayans were dealing with fallen angels also. They were sacrificing to gods. You notice the Egyptian pyramid is almost, it looks into the Orion belt similar to the pyramids in Mexico. So they were sacrificing to the same gods or the the fallen gods as the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Babylonians. So we're not to be dismayed at the signs of heaven and the prophecies of, of, uh, these, uh, of these different ancient civilizations. Okay? And it says, be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. So when they tell us something is in the sky, and something is coming, we must look at it from a different angle, okay? 
What angle should we look at this from? Let me read. Deuteronomy, it says, this is when the children of Israel uh, was going into the land of Canaan to take it for possession. Deuteronomy 12 and 28. Observe and hear all the words which I command thee, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee forever. When thou doest that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord God, Lord thy God, when the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess it, and thou uh, succeedest them and dwellest in their land, Take heed to thyself, that thou, that thou be not snared by, the, by following them. So the Most High says, when I give you this land, don't follow what's in that land. After, they, after that be destroyed, after that they be destroyed from before thee. Excuse me. And it says, and that thou inquire not after their gods. Do not inquire after their gods. So something was going on in the land of Canaan that the Most High was separating his people from. He said, don't go after the gods now when you take down this land. So what was in that land of Canaan? What? Fallen angels. Nephilim seed was in the land of Canaan that was worshipped as God. Fallen angels and their children who are being revered as demigods and gods, saying, how do, how do these nations serve their gods? Even so, I will do likewise. This is what the Most High warned us from. See, nations of this earth or Gentiles of this earth, when they are, are faced with a phenomenon that comes from space, they revere them as gods and worship these spirits from space. Automatically, it's part of what they do. And they put it in their folklore. They put it in their little, uh, their little fairy tale. They even place it in song. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Talking about Lucifer. Fallen angel. So this is what they do. The Most High said, listen, don't go for it. Then you had, during Disney's time, you have music. When, when, when I wish upon a star. Okay, they have songs about it where, where uh, there's fallen angels coming into the atmosphere and, and if you see a fallen star, you can make a wish. Why? Because they know that these angels can actually give technology and give understanding. And they can help you within a society. They can actually help you do things here for a price. The price, your soul. So the most high saying here in Deuteronomy 28, listen, when you go into this land, don't deal with the guys these people are dealing with. They're dealing with fallen angels. Okay? And what comes with this? The 31st verse, Deuteronomy 12 and 31, Thou shalt not do unto the Lord thy God. Do so unto the Lord thy God. For, for every abomination to the Lord, which he hated, have they done unto their God. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their God. These fallen angels require human sacrifice. Listen to me clearly, brothers and sisters. We're opening this whole thing up for you so you can, you can see it for what it is. The majority of children are missing, and they, the majority of children that these movie stars go to, uh, uh, to get children, these poor children in different countries, these children are going to end up being sacrificed. They're doing all types of free things to these children, turning these, turning these little babies out. This is what they do. It's part of their ritualistic a sacrifice to the God. It says here, the 32nd verse, Deuteronomy 12 and 32, What things soever I command you, observe to do it, thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. So the Most High was clear-cut with this. 
Don't deal with their God. Don't deal with their science. Don't deal with nothing that has anything to do with these people because they will turn you away from following the God of all gods. Now, how does, how does that equate to what's going on today? Let's go to Ezekiel, the first chapter. I'm in Ezekiel 1 and 4. Ezekiel reads, And I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself. A brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof as the color of amber, that's red, and out of the midst of the fire, also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, and everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings. These are angelic cherubs. And their feet were straight feet, and their soles of their feet was like the soles of a cat's foot, like a ninja boot, where they have the split there. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass to show you that these angels that Ezekiel is seeing are actually black men. They appeared black men. Why am I bringing this out? Because the Most High have ships too. He has what you would call angelic ships. That Ezekiel scene. See, these things are not unidentified. You can identify with these so-called UFOs out of the Bible. But brothers and sisters, understand Lucifer came from the same place this angel came from, these angels came from. So he would make technology to mimic the technology of the Most High. So we have to be able to decipher the difference between the Most High's uh, ships or the Most High so-called UFO that you see in the Bible and Satan. The majority of the technology we see today is Lucifer's technology. For years during the 40s and 50s, Oh, all right, during the time of so-called the fall of, of, of the ships at Roswell time, and I'm going to go into that, Roswell, New Mexico. Uh, there was a space program in the United States in which they were testing new flying technology. Okay? Now, in order for them to, to play it off, uh, they, they, they came out with movies during the 50s and 60s like Lost in Space, during the 60s and 70s, uh, 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 what other movies they had out there, whatever the thing, uh, uh, Star Trek, just to play some of these things off. And if people yeah. seen these these objects they were testing back then, if if you seen these uh, uh, objects, they would say, well, it, it was a weather balloon. At that time, they didn't want people to know that that the government was testing angel technology. Fallen angel technology, all right? And see, even in ancient hydroglyphs, uh, there's, there's, there's ancient uh, information on the Mayan walls that show ships there and UFOs there. They've always had this technology in the past. Uh, uh, you have Hollywood, which is set up through Satan himself, that usually come out with these movies like Alien Invasion and and uh, Alien versus Predator and the predator that they're showing is, 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 is really a demon. Uh, these are they whom civilization was sacrificing their children to in the past, whom the Most High told us to stay away from in the book of Deuteronomy. They are still sacrificing children to these same beings. Okay? These beings are being hid by the government in some of these mountains. They're controlling the government. They give government uh, the protocols on what to do in the earth and how to do certain things, they are still here. They never left. They've been amongst us since the beginning. They are still here. The Most High flooded the earth because of this. Okay, they started splicing animals and doing certain things, giving men technology, because the animals that they started creating during the time of the flood started consuming mankind and started eating people your dinosaurs, your Tyrannosaurus Rexes, and all these different new te te techno 
technological animal that Satan created was used to try to kill off the Most High's creation. The Most High told Noah, listen, I'm going to send the animals to the ship that goes on this ship. Don't put any animal that don't crouch before you. So Noah didn't go out looking for animals. The Most High sent the animals to preserve them, knowing that Satan had evil technology in the earth that was put here to consume mankind, and those animals were eating the Most High's creation. Same thing today. They're doing splicing of animals. New creatures are being found every place. Okay? So this My. is what's going on. This is where we are. This is where we are, okay? And they try to pass off their science through the healthcare field, saying, well, this is to help mankind send cells. Listen, if you want to help mankind, leave us alone. <laughs> That's what you do, all right? We don't want your science. Yeah. We don't want nothing from you. Leave us alone. And see, that's what Michael Jackson, even though Michael Jackson was high up, he was talking about that. Leave me alone. Listen, they don't really care about us. Even Michael Jackson said in 2009, with his, with, with his last, um, uh, he was about to do his last tour, and he told the people, he said, listen, we only got about five years to get this right. What did Michael Jackson know? Okay, hmm. see, see, you have to realize, brothers and sisters, as you go high up that pyramid, the higher you go, the more dark it becomes. And these, and you start seeing things outside of the bubble. And see, Michael Jackson was murdered. A lot of these people were murdered because they come to realize that they are part of the conspiracy that are, that, that are destroying the woman who bears a man child. Now, back to the so-called UFOs and how that equates to us today. The invasion happened in the beginning, brothers and sisters. It's no great phenomenon. This is not science fiction. They are here. They've always been here. They have put us in this bubble we call city and make you think that the world is overpopulated to control us. So that they can control us through their TV and through the Internet and through all these different forms of mind control while they consume the earth and prepare our destruction. That's why cities was constructed in the beginning, because we are too spread, we're too spread out. And if we're not condensed, they cannot control population. The same way if, you know, they test this on a lower level in jail. All these people pack together, but you can control the population if you can control their thinking, what they read, what they, what they see. You can control them through their medications and, and, their, and their drugs. All these things are, 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 are satanic science to keep us controlled so that they can fulfill the prophecy of Revelation, killing the children of Israel. Now, let's bring it up to today. Well, before we bring it to today, I said that we have, I showed you in Ezekiel where there is flying rose or there is so-called objects that Ezekiel sees. And it tells you that in the same chapter, let me go there. Uh, Ezekiel, the first chapter, it says, when they went upon their four sides, Ezekiel 1 and 17, and they turned not when they went. As for the rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings was full of eyes, round about them four. So it's a circle with eyes all around it, like lights around it. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by, went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. What, what are these wheels Ezekiel seeing? He's seeing activity or UFO activity. And it says in the 20th verse, whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. So there's a spirit controlling these ships, brothers and sisters. Thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. 
For the Most High have a spirit in these wheels or chariots. And who's went? And, and it says, when those, I'm at the 21st verse, when those went, these went. And when those stood, he stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. The spirit of the living creature was in the will. So I had to ask a question here. Could it be that living creatures be in the in some of these wills that are not connected to the Most High, that are part of Lucifer's band that fell from the heavenly realm? And what I found through the spirit of the Most High blew me away. Let's go to the book of Zechariah. So let's see what Zechariah sees. Zechariah 5 and 1 reads, Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. So if we seen a flying roll today, we would say, okay, that's a UFO. And he said unto me, What seest thou? Asking Zachariah, what do you see there? And Zachariah turned back and said, answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof 10 cubits. This is about 30 by 15 feet. Then said he unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stilleth shall be cut off as on this side according to it, and everyone that swear shall be cut off as on that side according to it. And it says, I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief. So the Most High will be sending his chariot to fight against Satan within this earth. We see this. The thieves are those who stole the earth. Not too long ago, there was a report about 15 years ago of a so-called UFO that was over Russia that actually started manning their missiles, and they could not control them. They could not control their electronics. They could not, they could not control their missiles. And then it stopped. And then the ship left. So sometimes, because we don't have no fight in us, the most fights in the chariots to fight for us. Okay, these scientists be doing their secret mission to destroy the children of Israel next to these mountains in different places. So the most high will send a ship, and he'll start a brush fire just to burn the whole thing up to stop their project, uh, to, to thwart their project and them trying to kill us. He used the ships to do this. And I'm going to prove this. The third verse. Then saith he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth, for everyone that still him shall be cut off, uh, uh, as, as on this side according to it, and everyone that swear shall be cut off on that side according to it. And I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that swear falsely by my name. Now, what people are swearing falsely by the Most High's name? The Jewish powers over there today. So the Most High is using the ships to take them out too, to take out their technology, to thwart their program because they're being used for the eugenics program to destroy the woman. They're being used to lie against the Most High. They're being used to set up Hollywood to further deceive the Most High, the Most High's people through television and all types of deceptions of education. The Most High says, I'm going to send them, send them out to fight against these people who are swearing falsely against me. And it shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it with the timber thereof as the stone thereof. What is consuming it with the timber thereof? That starting forest fires, brothers and sisters. So you have to realize we're in the city. We don't know what they're doing in these little uh, private areas 
that we're not allowed to go into. But the Most High knows. So the most high be mm. setting some of these things on the fire, knowing their thwarted plan of the fallen angels to fight against us. Then, you know, they be hiding angels and little fallen demons too. They hide this and protect this. So the most high just go there where they are and burn them out. Then they must go some wow. other place and go to some other mountain. Uh, when you read the sixth verse. It's a war, brother. I'm telling you, brother. It's yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right. There's a serious war happening within the earth. The sixth verse reads, and I say it, what is, what is it? So Zachariah wanted to know what is it, and most people listening probably say, well, what is this? And uh, he said, this is an ephah that goeth forth. If you know what an ephah is, ephah is the shape of like a round little bowl. It says, this is an ephah that goeth forth. And he said, moreover, this is the resemblance through all the earth. So this is how it will look through the whole earth. Now listen to this clearly, brothers and sisters. Here's the piece that I was saying that, well, could it be creatures in the other ones? Because we see in Ezekiel that there's a creature that spirit the ones the most high has. What is the creature that spirits those that Lucifer uh, uh, ha- have used, right? Let me read mm-hmm. it. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead. Now we know lead is the most dense and heaviest of the metals. So if you were to drop two objects down, lead would actually drop a little, you know, lead is heavier than any other metal. This is clearly brothers and sisters. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead. And this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. So what is this speaking of? This is a woman. See, this can confuse people. Well, what woman is Zachariah seeing sitting in the midst of the ephah? Hold this. Hold, hold this. And we're going to figure out what spirit of a woman is in the... In, in the ephah. I'm in Revelation. It says, And they came one of the seven angels, which had Revelation 17 and 1. And they came one of the seven angels, which, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sit up upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried, oh, carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed with purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls and having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. And I saw a woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, this is clearly, and the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carrieth her, which have the seven heads and the ten horns. You know the seven heads and ten horns of the seven mountains of Rome, ten horns of Europe? Listen to this clearly. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. We know that Satan will go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names was not written in the book of life from the foundations of the world when they behold is it, is it clear, the beast that was, that means it was from the beginning, the serpent, and, and is not, no one knows where it is, but yet is. And here is the mind. See, 
It says it, it, it was and it is not because the world has been deceived into believing Satan did not exist. And Satan is the spirit behind the woman, and I'm going to prove that. The seven heads of seven mountains, that's Rome, on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five are falling, one is, and the other is not yet come. So there's a new kingdom that must come, and we know that's America at this time, because during the time of John of the Isle of Patmos, America was not created yet. America was not founded yet. So there was a new kingdom that must come and continue a short space. That's America. And the beast that was and is not, even he is of the eight and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. How does this relate to the woman? Let me show you. When you go back to Zechariah 5, listen to this clip. Hope this is not over too many people's, people's head yet. Zechariah 5 and 8, speaking of the woman. And he said, this is the wickedness. Listen, Zechariah 5, 7, and 8. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. It's talking about the spirit that was in Revelation, the spirit that would deceive the earth, the spirit of evil that would be used to, to flood and destroy the woman. That same spirit is in this ephah in Zechariah. And, and it, listen to this clearly, y'all. And he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then I lifted upon mine eyes. I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came out two women. And the wings were in the wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the ephod between the earth and the heavens. So Zechariah is seeing a spirit of someone lifting up these so called ships. Then said I to the angel, that talk with me. Whither do these bear the ephah? Who is these spirits that are bearing the ephah? And he said to me, to build it in a house in the land of Shinar. What is the land of Shinar, brothers and sisters? The land of Shinar is Babylon. It's showing that these so-called ships and the spirit of these ships would be made in America. And it shall be established and set there upon her own base, NASA. They would have bases in Babylon with the spirit of the woman, fueling these ships to fight against the Most High and his ships. Now, you notice how it says that they were like lead, and they would fall upon the earth. This, this is breaking down on one level that the most high ships do not crash. But the ships of a woman could fall to the earth. They can crash like lead. They can fall. That's the difference between the most high technology and the woman's technology. So what, I'm, what we're showing here, when you read this, when you read in Zechariah, the fifth and sixth chapter, it tell you, uh, it shows you these different horses or these different ships or chariots, chariots that they call horses, horses which run on the wings of the wind, that they set up in different bases all around the earth. And Zach Ryder, sixth chapter, actually gives you the geographical location of where they're set up. See, the Bible is, is <laughs> it tells you the spirit of the woman who would set her base in Shinar, which we know is Babylon. So when they came to America, they had to assume a base in which they would start building so-called UFOs. They understood that they were pressed for time, knowing that Lucifer had a short time, to build a technology that could so-called match the technology that's coming from the heaven. This is this war in heaven that's coming in the future. This is Star Wars that I'm speaking of here. Because, ain't, because Christ is coming back with thousands of them, thousands upon thousands of them, will, will be over the whole earth. 
And brothers and sisters, this is what the government have been pre- preparing us for, to fight against the Most High, he, uh, 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 that, that to prepare us for an alien invasion that may threaten our way of life. So they're making it look as if what's coming is, is evil. But the invasion is already here. What's already here is the evil ones, not what's coming to save us. See, that's the flip side in the deception of Lucifer. Okay? So he had to, he had to uh, uh, put a program in place to make the brothers and sisters in the earth believe that what was coming is against us. So how, how else would he get... Uh, us to fight in his armies and us to, to, you know, to fill out applications to join NASA. Do you know that if you join NASA, working for NASA, you're working to fight against the Most High himself? You're fighting, you're looking, you, you, you're joining Satan's army to fight against the Most High and to fight against the second coming of Christ. Even though you're loose, nonetheless, you're still on the, on, you're still on, uh, on the wrong side of this battle. Now, let me get the book of Acts. The book of Acts. Christ is coming back with thousands upon thousands of these chariots. I'm in the book of Acts 1 and 7. 1 and 9. Acts 1 and 7 down through 9 says, and he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his power, his own power. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. Now, look at what's going on here. While they beheld Christ, Christ's last words is, is telling them what they would need to do to proclaim this, and he'll give them power to proclaim this throughout the earth. And then Christ himself, Yeshua, was taken in a cloud. And while they steadfastly looked, uh, uh, they set fastly, they looked set fast before the heaven as he went up before two men stood by them in white apparel. These were angels, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why standeth ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus, or Yeshua, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen seen him go into heaven. That's telling us that Christ will break the atmosphere from space. But what was this cloud that he was taken up into? Let's see. Let's go to Psalm 104 and 3. It says he's coming back in like manner, the same way he was taken up. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my power, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. We know that's Christ. Who, co- who covereth thyself with light and with a garment. Who stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain. Who maketh, listen, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters. So you can see the reflection of the chariots coming off of the waters. Who maketh the clouds his chariot. Chariot is a vehicle who walketh upon the wings of the wind. What walks upon the wings of the wind? So-called UFOs. And what was Christ taken up in? A cloud. More. When we were delivered out of Egypt, 
What did we see? What did we see, or what was guiding us coming oh, out of Egypt? Exodus 13 and 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud oh. <laughs> to, lead, to lead them, to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire. So you might see them look and they turn different colors, amber, red, green. And this is what was guiding us out of Egypt and through the wilderness, to give them life to go <laughs> by day and night. Oh, wow. Let's go to the New Testament. Praise the Most High. I just got revelation there. Because... Who was in this chariot? Who was in this chariot that was guiding us? Who was in this chariot of the Old Testament? What was the spirit in that chariot? First Corinthians, New Testament, the 10th chapter. But moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. Don't, don't ignore this, brothers and sisters. How that all our fathers... We're under the cloud. That's talking about us coming out of Egypt. And all pass through the sea. That's the Red Sea. When you go down to the fourth verse, when you, let me read it all the way through. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, which means we had to go through the water for salvation back then, and we must come through the water for salvation now. And did all eat the same spiritual meat that was the manna that rained from heaven? And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So who was in the chariot? The spirit of Yeshua. It was Christ who led us out of Egypt. Moses was just a physical vessel. He's coming back. He's coming back with thousands upon thousands of angels. Thousands upon thousands of them will consume the atmosphere. This is the war, brothers and sisters, that Satan is ramping up for. Okay, he could care less about the people on this earth. He, he will rape this earth to get the technology and everything he needs to prepare for this, because this is it for him. This is it. And all the Illuminist powers and the Illuminati and the powers of Rome will fall with him. You are all complicit. They're going down. They are going down. These armies are nothing compared to the chariots of fire. The chariots of the Most High is going to bring, just going to appear out of nowhere in our atmosphere. Thousands upon thousands. Let me read this in Daniel. Let me read this. Daniel 7 and 9. And I beheld to the thrones were cast down. So Daniel seems the end of these satanic governments we call society. I beheld to the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. And his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. So here's the wheel. The tenth verse. And a fiery stream issued and came forth from him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him. And ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. And I beheld because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even to the beast was slain, and his body destroyed and given to the burning fire. And I, and as concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away to show you that these beasts represent empires. There's a spirit behind all the governments of this earth. They had their dominion taken away. 
yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. And I saw the night vision. This is what Daniel is seeing. Behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given the dominion and glory and the kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. His kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing Christ coming before the heavenly throne with full power, getting ready, getting his angelic forces ready to fight against the beast and his so-called technology. Brothers and sisters, what I'm reading to you is the real world. This is what's really going on. And the battle is for us. The battle is for us. There's a race of time. If Christ do not cut Satan's time short or Lucifer's time short or these fallen gods who are being worshipped, worship time short, none of us will be saved through this. None of us will be saved. They have us all numbered. They have us all in a database. They have us all, uh, they have, they know everything about us, okay? But what the, the peace they don't have is our connection with the Most High. And that will allow us to overcome the beast. And, and, and all this technology and all this power and might, we have the Most High on our side. And, yes, we're going to go through some hard times, but Israel, we're going to make it through this because we have an army greater than this earth's army. Okay, so I wanted to bring that forth. I hope I did it in, 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 a, in uh, the correct amount of time through the spirit of the Most High, but I wanted the people to know, don't get dismayed at what you're seeing out there. Satan is deceiving you with Helen and all these other things. The prophet and the Bible tells us what to look for. If they are, if they're interested in joining the academy, we have a Bible academy which teaches the truth out of the Bible every Sunday. All right? Uh, it's an academy that helps the work, it helps our travel, and it helps brothers and sisters who um you know who we, who have already left and we use the money to you know to help them. And it's only it's only fifty a month. It's for three months. You want for fifty a month. And mm-hmm. it's history, it's Hebrew, it's Bible scripture, you get uh PDFs which are uh which are Profound. It's all the information we've put together through the Holy Spirit. And instead of just putting it out in a book, we figured we would just give it just like that. It's more book vocation. If you can get 30 years in a theologian college, okay, in three months, it's a crash course. But by the time you get through the three months, you'll be ready. You'll be ready to teach the word of the Most High. Also, uh, we, we, will in, we will inject every... Weekend, every weekend will be a 30-minute news program keeping brothers and sisters up on prophecy to let them know where we stand uh, at the moment to stay in the loop, all right? And see, this is, uh, this is the righteous uh, screening process so that we can, uh, so we can build uh, some level of rapport amongst brothers and sisters in our next step going into the migration program to help others understand how to operate outside of the United States and build outside of the United States. So we, you know, through the spirit of the Most High, we receive the understanding on how to do it so that we can build a relationship between us and so many people out there in the world and still do our work here and not feel that, you know, that we're not giving our ample time to the brothers and sisters who are trying to make moves. So mm-hmm. that's the whole point. And, I see. Uh, Everyone is invited, and if you if you wish to to be a part of it, um, you can send an email to gathering as one the number one at aol dot com. Okay, and uh, you know you are all invited. We we open it up. We're going to keep it open for others, even though we have the number that we were we, we were looking. 
Okay. And when is that deadline you're going to close that officially? Uh, when is that deadline you're going to close it officially uh, for just a few more people to get into the academy? Well, September 18th. We're going to take enrollment up until the 18th of September. Okay. And uh, okay. you can go to the website also, gatheringofchrist.org. All right? And detailed oh. information is there. And information on how to become a part of the academy is there also. It's called oh. gatheringofchristchurch.org. Four. Okay, area code 601. Go ahead. Hello, how, how are you brothers doing tonight? Uh, I'd like to tell you have another great show, uh, very enlightening, and I, I do love the fact that, that uh, everything that's being spoken tonight is being backed up by the scripture. Um, so I'd like to uh, just commend the both of you uh, for a great show. And uh, I kind of had a, a, a question, I know I'll make it quick, uh, question slash comment, and I, I, I wanted to... Uh, uh, the brother to uh, you know kind of throw in uh, what he thinks about this, but these so-called planets uh, in our solar system, brother, Edna, um, aren't these uh, so-called planets in our solar system? Aren't they named after fallen angels? Am I correct? Absolutely, or- absolutely. And uh, I I went into a lesson on that that said. Um, that talked about, uh, that, that gave the understanding that planets are actually disguised by fallen angels. Right. There is really no such thing as planets. When you, when you look at planets in the Bible, let me get that out there real quick so that everyone can understand what I mean. I'm not saying that what you see up there is not there. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying, what we're seeing there are not planets. <laughs> Okay, they're not planets; they're stars. So, right. so, but they named them planets so that they can disguise the fact that these are spirits they are worshiping as angels. So, by acknowledging right. them, you are given power to these particular spirits. Let me give an example. Uh, when you look at Second Kings twenty-three and five, right? You see the word planets there. You see the words planet where it says, and he, and he put down the idolatrous priest who the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense into high places in the cities of Judah and the places round about Jerusalem. Them also that burn incense unto Baal, which is Satan, to the sun like they do on Sunday worship, and the moon like those that are dealing with lunar Sabbath, and the planets. When you look at that word planet right there, it says constellation, that is, zodiacal sign. So when you acknowledge planets, you're dealing with the zodiac. It's, it's, right. it's all spirit. So that word planet right. is not talking about one specific planet. It's talking about zodiac. What makes up the, star, the zodiac? The constellation or stars. So it's not talking about right. Mars or Jupiter. It's talking about stars in general. Which are angels. I get that. Right, right. Okay. So just exactly like you said, um uh when we're when we call out the names of these so called planets or stars, we're actually paying homage to these fallen angels and, and uh exactly. and on to <laughs> the people out here in the world, you know, that are clueless, uh they're paying homage to the fallen angels. Yeah. The, the, there's science their science is really acknowledging uh, the spirits who gave them their technology. That's all their science is. Okay? There's no way possible that the Greeks and the Romans would have uh, information on how the planets or what they call the planets were aligned around the Earth with no technology exactly. to get out. But where did they get that from? How the stars are aligned around the Earth. They got it from fallen angels. When you look in the book of Acts, there was a place that, that was called Mars Hill. There was, there was a place because they was worshiping Mars. In Acts 17 and 22, Paul went, went to that area to preach about their superstition. He says, 
Then Paul stood in the midst of Mar Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. That's scripture. So if you believe in Mars, you're part of the superstition of science. Mm, right. You see, that's why science wants to destroy the validity of the Bible, because the Bible shows you how ridiculous their science is. Just come out and say you're worshiping Satan and worshiping planets and stars and stop trying to hide behind science in these schools. Just come out and tell us what you're doing, because we know now. Okay? <laughs> right. And, oh, brother, wow. you know, one, one, uh, one more question for you, brother. I've been reading uh, in the uh, book of Zechariah, and uh, I've been kind of, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that don't believe that, uh, what is it, I guess, uh, nuclear weapons uh, won't be a factor, you know, here in the, in the, yeah. early, in the end times. And I, I wanted to read a scripture and kind of get you to comment on that. Uh, it's Zechariah. Chapter 14, verse 12, you know, and Mm -hmm. it reads, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Now, just from reading that, brother, that sounds like something nuclear to me. No. Hey, hey, Billy, you won't get no pushback here. That's definitely the place that's going to come across the earth. What else can consume your eye sockets out of your holes? That's not nuclear radiation. Exactly, right. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. well, Maurice and I were kind of going through Zachariah today, and uh, <clears throat> we were studying uh, the book of Zachariah. We came across that, and, and we kind of came to the conclusion that's the only thing it can be, brother. And listen, I just yeah, want to is. tell you thanks again, man, for answering my questions. Great show, you and Brother Maurice, and I, I'll let the next caller call in. Uh, peace be unto you. All right, okay, you, area, code, area code 310, you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, hey, now, this is uh, Yosef. I um, uh, just wanted to, uh, I guess, first comment on a few things. Um, I'll make it as, as uh, abrupt as possible, and then I have a question. At the end, first, um, definitely the Most High is with you, um, uh, Elder Recall, and uh, your insight is, is greatly appreciated. But first, I just wanted to kind of start off and say that I've, I've um, from the Los Angeles area, I've been in an acting career for, goodness, about 20 years, and the Most High took me out about four years. But to make a long story short, I've seen a lot, and I've, and I've, I've been in, you know, Big budget movies, Paramount Pictures, you know, on and on. I, I don't want to just definitely, you know, identify or put my um, government name out there, so to speak, because you never know who's hearing. I mean, that's even a reason why I don't get on Facebook and MySpace and so forth. But I wanted to um, uh, get into the to the issue of the deception thing because with you talking about the um, UFOs and so forth. You know, and also I have to say I came up as a uh, traditional Christian, and um, I got to say, uh, about gosh, 22—no, not 22 years ago, about 12 years ago—I was reading the Word, and uh, the Most High was dealing with me, um, and I had seen in there uh, dealing in uh, Deuteronomy 28:68, dealing with the ships, you know, being taken back into Egypt um, by ships. And I remember speaking to my mom about it, and, you know, she basically dismissed it and gave some sort of, you know, erroneous traditional Christian uh, uh, manifestation, (laughs) just basically spoke in circles. And so, you know, it kind of got me off of it. But, of course, now he's brought me back on. I've been following you guys um, on YouTube now and uh, Sabbath, and I actually even signed up with the class, my wife and I, about a week ago, and my brother as well. So we're going to be following there. But... I wanted to touch on two things. I'll make it short. One is um, I looked up, because I, I've been really having an issue with a lot of our brothers and sisters who, whose eyes haven't been opened yet, um, dealing with the canon. They just refuse, you know, to go into the Apocrypha or uh, the Book of Jasher, um, even though these, these, well, the Book of Jasher is mentioned in our, our canon. 
So the definition, you know, I looked it up, and I wanted people to hear this. Um, in Wikipedia, it's uh, the definition of canonical is the re uh, reduced to the simplest and most significant form possible without loss of generality, meaning a basic storyline, a canonical syllabus pattern. So that basically means that they're giving you the most watered-down basic form of substance um, that they feel, you know, that you need, of course, being the Roman Catholic Church. So I thought that was very important. And then second, um, dealing with the deception, I'll read this one scripture, then I'll, I'll, I'll have my question. Uh, of course, deception or deceive is in the Bible, the King James Version, 27 times. But here at Matthew 24, 24, it says, For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs, and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. That, of course, meaning uh, Israel itself, um, the elect of Israel itself. So with this being said, a lot of people in the Christian traditionalism always take everything to a spiritual sense. And they don't understand the fact that this deceit is so great that you're not going to willingly go down to the line and, and um, you know, I'm sorry, be forced. You know, they're going to say, hey, you serve Satan right now, take this mark of the beast. They don't understand that everything is pretty much the whole frog analogy where if you put a frog in a pot and you slowly warm it up, it'll boil, and, of course, the frog will die. But if, you know, you throw a frog into a boiling pot of water, they'll jump out, so they don't real, realize that. Now, I wanted to say that, um, but uh, I wanted, my question is, with you dealing with everything, and everything has been spot on by Scripture, and I really appreciate that. I've heard you deal with this seven-year period when this, this great war will be going on with uh, Yeshia and the chariots and the angels and, of course, um, Illuminati or, you know, Satan's minions, so to speak. Where in Scripture can I, can I follow that, this seven-year period, and, and, and get more insight on that? Okay, let me read it. That's, that, that's a quick one there. Okay. The book of Ezekiel. <laughs> and the book, book of Ezekiel, of... brother. Okay, Ezekiel. I'm just going to bring this up here. You go to Ezekiel 39. It says, And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth. That's after Christ set us up. And shall set on okay. fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, and the bows and arrows, and the hand staves and spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. So we're going to go around the whole earth collecting their little menial weapons and putting the okay. earth in its place. Okay? Okay. I see that. That, that now, does I, it for me. I'd like to say thank you, brother. Thank you. And, and uh, when, when I hear brothers and sisters coming to the word of the Most High, you know, it inspires and it fuels up to continue to do work. And I want to thank you, brother. And uh, never stop.